What's going on, people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, back with another live stream. Happy Tuesday. And uh, listen, we're back with another match preview as we uh, go head to head with Luton tomorrow night. Games coming thick and fast. Eight games this month for Arsenal, man. And I think by the end of this month, you'll know what direction we're going in with the Premier League and the Champions League, whether we're going to be lifting trophies or not, people. So straight back to it tomorrow. Luton at home on paper should be a game that we win comfortably. But this is that time of the year when, you know, relegation threatened teams start to pick up crazy results. And we've just got to make sure, you know, we're not one of those teams that allows them to do it. If we do our job properly, it should be light work tomorrow um, and we should do our job. And uh, I think it will be an opportunity to get some confidence into some players. I think Saka could do with a goal. Martinelli hopefully will be back for that. Trossard, have a, just a few players, you know, need to play themselves into form. And I think you'll see some rotation tomorrow because we play every single midweek this month. We've got Luton tomorrow. Next midweek, we've got Bayern Munich. The midweek after that, we've got Bayern Munich. And the midweek after that, we've got Chelsea. So, listen, there's a lot going on. Yeah, Gabby gets the green screen again. Let's leave him there. Email address, CurtisShawTV at Hotmail.com. I'm old school people. Hotmail settings, no Gmail business. Uh, but big up to everyone locked in. Uh, rival fans are still vexed that we got a point. But we move on. Manchester City haven't lost to anybody in the Premier League this season. Getting a draw there was not the end of the world. We're a Trossard pass away from winning the game. So it is what it is. It is what it is, people. We need to... Um, I, I've, I've said that Manchester City game will be as good a result as what happens in the next few games. If we drop points against somebody that we should beat, you look back at that Man City game and say, maybe we should have done a little bit more to win it. If we win the next few games, then that's a great point at Man City. So I've got no problem with it. Uh, who to be a Guna? Yeah, you're right. Big up to man like Kevin Campbell, man. Want to give a massive shout out to Kev. Uh, he was back on the Highbury squad yesterday. He's been through a torrid, torrid time over the last uh, couple of months, man, with his, uh, with his obvious health problems. And uh, great to see him back. I did speak to him last night as well. And uh, listen, hopefully at some stage we'll get him back on the channel, but I don't want to rush him. I don't even want to ask him to come on as of yet, man. Let him just do it in his own time. And and listen, he's a, he's somebody that would offer to come on the channel himself. So great to see him back and uh, glad he's on the men. So big up Kev if you're tuned in. I know he does watch um, sometimes as well. Um, but tomorrow night's a big game. It is a big game. And it's not just because we're playing. Manchester City play Aston Villa tomorrow night. I'm going to start actually by looking at the Premier League table. Uh, a lot of interesting games this week and um, at the weekend as well. Very interesting games. Now, just looking ahead briefly, I'm only really concentrating on the top of the league, of course. Um, Liverpool play Sheffield United tomorrow night. I mean, that's going to be like an all-you-can-eat restaurant. Sheffield United are dreadful. And uh, I saw a, an article today saying how Mo Salah is desperate to win the golden boot ahead of Haaland. That's a great game for him to probably do that. Um, we've got Luton. As I said, Luton, I think, are better than Sheffield United, which is why I'm probably not going to... You know, I look at that Liverpool game, I genuinely think they could win 6 or 7 nil against Sheffield United. I don't necessarily think we will beat Luton that comfortably as that. But if we were to score in the first 10, 15 minutes, then yeah, my evaluation would be, can we give these lot four or five, you know, and really, and really smash them. Um, goal difference could be important, people. We're 11 goals clear at Manchester City um, on the goal difference. We're six ahead of Liverpool. Who knows? Imagine we finished level on points last game of the season and you win the league on goal difference. That's an extra point at the end of the day. So we need to score some goals tomorrow. But yeah, I, I do think Luton are better than Sheffield United. So probably a slightly harder game. But I am expecting a comfortable victory. We've got a massive week coming up. Obviously, after the Luton game, uh, Luton, sorry, we play Brighton away this weekend, which is a tricky game. Um, Brighton haven't been as good this season, but they are... They are a difficult team to go and beat at their place. 
Now, Manchester City this weekend play Crystal Palace. So, so City have got Aston Villa at home tomorrow night and Crystal Palace away at the weekend. Is there a possibility that Man City drop points? Liverpool play Sheffield United. They then play Manchester United at Old Trafford on Sunday. I will be doing a watch-along on Sunday for Liverpool against Manchester United. Um, so we'll definitely be doing that. I might even do Crystal Palace against Man City. I believe that's 12.30 on Saturday and then we play at 5.30 on Saturday. Apparently Luton have seven or eight of the starting 11 out. I mean, if that's the case, then I, I change my opinion. I'm expecting 5-0 minimum. Uh, I've got to be honest. i tell you what is interesting is that... I'm big up Craig from Ireland. Uh, I actually... Man United really against Chelsea could be a big game for Arsenal. And I'll tell you why. What I don't want is Man United to lose to Chelsea. That probably ends any hope that they would have of getting fifth. Fifth could be a Champions League spot um, if the coefficient points. Because I'm thinking if United lose to Chelsea, they will have no motivation against Liverpool. Because I don't think United will be that motivated to hang on to sixth or get seventh. I actually want Man United to deal with Chelsea so that their motivation levels are still kind of there for when they play Liverpool. Because this is one of the games, you know, when you look through the fixture list, you're going, I'm looking for Liverpool to at least draw that game, maybe lose. If Man United are not motivated for that game, then it's a concern. So, you know, this is a big week. This is a big week. Where's Chelsea? They're somewhere on page two. Uh, Costa said, did you see what Turkish said on big six? Man guaranteed Arsenal are winning a major. I mean, big up everyone who tuned in for the show with me and Turkish yesterday. And I did listen to some of big six. Um, I didn't hear all of it. I had it on when I was in the car. But um, guaranteed Arsenal are winning a major. What, this season? I mean... I know he was saying that to me, he expects Arteta to win a major this season or next season. As, as I've said many times, Arteta is a massively improving manager. I love the fact that he was able to go to Man City and show that style of football. It's one thing to be able to go and outplay and outscore teams. It's another thing to be able to stop teams. And I think it's a side of football that we don't acknowledge and respect enough in the game now because football is an entertainment business. So a nil-nil looks like a boring game. And it, and it, and it does. We want to see goals. But defending is 50% of the game. Defending's 50% of the game. And you do need to master the art of defending. Now, as we were saying about Arteta, I mean, people saying he said within 18 months, so by the end of next season... Um, Arteta is on the cusp of becoming one of the best young managers in world football and probably being linked with every major job to ending up at Real Sociedad. That, that's, that, that's the reality. If Arteta wins the Premier League or the Champions League at Arsenal, you're one of the best managers in the world outside of Klopp and Pep and Ancelotti because of their history. But you would be that new generation of top managers. Now, I do think even without the major trophy, that he would be linked with Barcelona, he would be linked with PSG, especially with his links to those two clubs, because there aren't many top quality young managers. But winning that major takes him to the next level. It really does. And I always say, he's improved us, we've made progress, but for it to be success and not just progression, we need the major trophy. Klopp came to Liverpool, Europa League final, then he got top four. Then he lost in a Champions League final. Then he won the Champions League, won the Premier League, won the League Cup, won the FA. So it was a progression. The major trophies started arriving. And I know Klopp's had a lot more experience than Arteta, but the best get over the finish line. And that's the reality. And it needs to happen eventually. You know, I know a lot of people are saying, yeah, but Klopp goes next year, so Liverpool will drop... We don't know. We don't know. And how do we know Chelsea don't get it to click? How do we know Man United's owners don't come in and get it right and spend 300 million on top quality? You've got to actually capitalise on the fact that Tottenham are no threat to the title. Man United are completely out of it. Chelsea are on page two of this screen of the Premier League table. So we have to make the most of it, you know. And uh, But listen, he is... He is um, definitely a good manager, Arteta, and he is improving, but we want the trophies. 
We want the trophies. Success is major trophies at Arsenal. Progression isn't major success. Progression was getting us from 8th to 4th to 2nd to a title race. Now we need to get over that finish line. People saying Watkins is injured. I did see that uh, he's tweaked his hamstring. That's not good. That's not good. i got to be honest. Aston Villa without Watkins at the Etihad, I don't have a lot of faith that Villa will will beat Man City without Watkins. But you know what? Let's focus on what's in front of us, and that's Liverpool. Liverpool are the number one target right now. If you're running the 100 metres, you don't turn around and look who's running behind you. You're looking at who's running in front of you. The reality is we're ahead of Man City. Um, but yeah, we're relying on Leon Bailey, man. Yard man settings. Big up Fitz, he said, big C progression is winning the title. You're right, we finished second last year. We finished second last year. If we finish second or third this year, ultimately we've 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 stalled the car at the traffic lights and people are beeping behind us. Or we've gone backwards, we've reversed when we're supposed to drive. We finished second, we spent 230 million, the biggest transfer window ever. Let's see what happens. Let's see. As I've always said, sometimes the best team doesn't win the league. You may have been the best team for that season, but you're still not necessarily the best team. I still think Manchester City are the best team in this country. But ultimately, seven draws and three defeats says they're not the best team in the country because of the because of the, the points tally. So let's take advantage of it. Maybe they didn't have a good enough window. Lexa said, um, Big C, I was embarrassed by the lack of composure on the ball and not having a go. That being said, I hear other fans crying about us being boring. I couldn't care less. I was, I wasn't embarrassed because I think we have to understand, right? Manchester City had 72% possession. We had 28%. I would expect Luton, Burnley, Sheffield United to have 28% possession against Man City. But what that does, it drains your energy levels. Do you know how hard it is when a team is bopping you like that and you're trying to press and your energy is just being drained out of you. When you get the ball, you're almost like, oh, you know, you just play a tired pass and you've lost the ball and then you've got to chase it again. It is hard. It is hard. And it wasn't entertaining. It wasn't enjoyable. But as I keep saying, if Trossard finds Martinelli, we win the game 1-0. It's a masterclass. Conte has done it over the years. Mourinho has done it. Simeone has done it. We've seen them guys just spoil games and beat Pep's teams. So it was fine margins. It was fine margins, you know. No, you definitely can't fluke a league title. If you're the better team over 38, you'll win it. It's no fluke. Um, big up Cooper who said congrats on 75k. Big C in the community. Legends, all of you really appreciate it. Uh, the channel goes nowhere without your support, turning up, hitting the like, sharing the content, commenting, all of that good stuff. So big up the community, really appreciate it. Let's hit 100k by the end of 2024. Let's win the title this summer. Um, Ali said, Curtis, the problem is Kevin De Bruyne's past. That is how we lost last time we faced City at the Emirates. And, and yeah, listen, what we did well, what we've done well this season, and this is the big positive that I want to give the Arsenal fan base looking at the Man City games. If you look at last season, we lost to Man City because we made mistakes. Tommy Asu at the Emirates, short back pass De Bruyne scores. Then you're chasing the game. We went to the Etihad, we made mistakes. Odegaard under hits a back pass, gets caught. Haaland, um, De Bruyne scores. Haaland scored a little bit later. So we made mistakes. We have played Manchester City twice this year. The best team in the world, the treble winners. We've been faultless defensively. We haven't made one mistake in 180 minutes against the best footballing team on the planet. That is a huge credit to this football club. Because we've been flimsy, we've been soft in the past. That core was weak. Now we got that brick wall at centre back, Saliba and Gabriel. Now we got Declan Rice, the protective force in front of them, and and Ben White's contributed and and other players. So I, I think that spine is what you can build from and win multiple trophies as the years go on. In fact, 270 minutes if you want to include the Community Shield. What we need now as a team is we need a bit more star quality in the attack. 
in my opinion. As I keep saying, we need that Alexis Sanchez. We need that Aubameyang. We need that prime Meza Ozil. However that looks, maybe Odegaard becomes the top player. Maybe Saka becomes the top player. I just think we need a bit more star quality in attack and maybe a better midfield partner next to Rice. But we're on our way. Let's see what we can do. The game's on TNT Sport tomorrow, people. Some people said Trossard might have been offside, so yeah, it might have been irrelevant. Maybe he would have passed it and, you know, I'd have celebrated for no reason. Anyway, let's get into the show. I've waffled on long enough and we've got more waffle to come. We did have the press conference today with Mikel Arteta. I haven't seen many of the quotes. One of the big quotes that I will say is that he said that Martinelli is available to start this game. He, he was saying that Martinelli was not really available to start against Manchester City, but he believes he can start on Wednesday night. And I think we will need some rotation. Um, so we will see. Uh, Johnny said Liverpool will drop points if you look at their last six. Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think all three teams will drop points. I think when you look at it, just to quickly go through this, I think Liverpool, even though they're top, I think they're riding their look a little bit. I don't think this is like the Liverpool of Mane, Salah and uh, Firmino that was ripping teams to shreds. They're winning a lot of games by one. They concede a lot of chances. They're changing their defence a lot because of injuries. I do think Liverpool will drop a few points. Not too many, but I think they'll drop a few. Um, and I think City will drop a few as well. You know, Playing Real Madrid... Back-to-back -back will take a lot out of them. They've got an FA Cup semi-final at Wembley against Chelsea. You know, I think they will be stretched a little bit. And us as well, listen, we will because we've got Bayern Munich home and away and that will take a lot out of us as well. We haven't usually been in Europe, especially not the Champions League at this stage of the season. Those games are going to take a lot out of us physically and mentally. When you've had to play Bayern on the Tuesday and then you've got a big game on the weekend... It will be. It will. It will feel a lot different to when we were in the Europa League. Uh, Lay said, "I don't think this current City team will beat Madrid. Maybe. I mean, I'm not sure because when you look at the Madrid team, they lost Benzema. They brought in Bellingham. It's basically the same team as last season. Man City smashed that team last season. Um, but you would say, obviously, Bellingham's improved them. Rodrigo and Vinny have improved." I feel like I want City to... That's a good point, you know. As an Arsenal fan, actually, I know we're looking ahead here. Who would you rather play in the semi-final if we were to get through? Would you rather play Real Madrid or would you rather play Man City? I'm not actually sure. Do you know what? I think that's worth a poll. I know we're looking ahead a little bit there, but I've never really thought about that. Would you want to play Real Madrid just so we're not playing an English team again and maybe Madrid will be able to be got at a little bit more? Don't keep the ball as well as City, or would you rather play City? You know, we've we've beat them and drawn with them, um, and that also, if you're in the title race, who would you rather play? Let's get that in. Who would you rather play? Champions League semi final, Man City or Madrid? Let's see. Let's see who you guys think. I, I still, I I still think. Man City are, are better than Real Madrid, personally. I still think City... I don't think Madrid would have 72% possession against Arsenal. But what they do have that makes them more difficult is they are explosive in the front line. You know, City... OK, Doku came on with his pace, but his technical ability is dreadful. Um, Vinicius and Rodrigo are... They are ruthless this season. And then Bellingham. So, oh, it's a great question. Great question. Mohamed said City scored zero against Arsenal this season. That's crazy. That is crazy. No goals against us in two league games. It's just unheard of, isn't it, for a pet team? If Madrid are beating City, then I would be really concerned. Says uh, Maduapi. Uh, Graham said, should be able to start with Trossard, Havertz and Jesus tomorrow against Luton. Uh, Vinicius or Rodrigo against Kivio. Kivio couldn't play that game. There's not a chance. He would have to get dropped for Tommy Asu. They have that heritage. Yeah, man. Just the Bernabeu. That atmosphere. I'm not sure. I think I think we would cause their defence a lot of problems, though. You know, Carvajal, I think, can be got at. You know, 
It's a tricky one. It's a very, it's a very tricky one. Madrid got better individuals and our heritage. Madrid, their defence is not as good as City, yeah. I would be more fearful of Madrid's attack. Rodrigo, Vinicius and Bellingham. But I actually think I would rather attack Madrid's defence because I do think the likes of Carvajal can really be got at. So whoever we get would be very interesting, that is for sure. Vinicius against Ben White, well, it would be a good test for him. It would be a good test. The more I think about it, I feel like... Hmm, maybe City, you know. Maybe I would rather play City. Um, but I just think from a, a neutral point of view, I'm kind of bored of watching us play against Man City. I think a Madrid game would be brilliant. See Arsenal in the Bernabeu against Real Madrid, I think would be the more enjoyable game to watch. You know, Run it back from when, when Thierry just struggled off R9 Ronaldo, slotted it past Casillas. Gonorola said, Madrid, uh, we have bad luck against English teams in the Champions League, plus law of averages suggests we're due a loss to City over five games. I hear you. I hear you. Um, well, the poll's there. Good question, Lay. You started off a good debate there. Uh, right, let's get into it. Uh, I'll save the waffle till later because I don't want to put you to sleep. Um, so let's talk transfers. Two transfers involving Arsenal and Newcastle. Want to know your thoughts and opinions. Newcastle are set to reignite their interest in Aaron Ramsdale ahead of a potential summer move with the goalkeeper keen to play regular football. Um, boss Eddie Howe wants to be reunited with Ramsdale. He was his manager back in 2020 um, at Bournemouth. He had him there and um, they obviously know each other from then. Eddie Howe wants a younger goalkeeper um, than Pope. Pope suffered with injuries this season. I think Ramsdale is a better goalkeeper than Pope. And Newcastle are interested. Now, I think most Arsenal fans would would accept the fact that Ramsdale is going to leave. Um, I think uh, Gareth Southgate has said that for him to potentially get Pickford out of the team, he's going to need to play first-team football. That's the reality. Um, I suppose it comes down to how much money can we get for him? Um, it's it's a difficult one because there's no doubt a year of sitting on the bench, the mistake that he made the other week when he played, and the fact that other clubs know that he's, number one, he wants to leave, number two, Arsenal are willing to sell him, clubs will probably try and offer us less than what he's worth. Now, we paid £30 million for him. Now, I just want to say, first of all, we should be getting no less than what we paid for him. I actually think we should be making a small profit. But I just don't think we will make a lot of profit on him because Arsenal are just not that club when it comes to selling. Um, but I would be turning around to Newcastle and saying, listen, he's better than Nick Pope. He's English and you need English players in your squad for the quota. And he's 25, 26 years of age. As much as I think Ramsdale's time is up at Arsenal... I wouldn't be surprised if Ramsdale went to Newcastle and improved and got in the England team. I think Ramsdale is a better goalkeeper than Pickford. It just... Pickford has done very well for Southgate and he won't budge. But um, I would want £40 million for him. I think that's reasonable. Even if it looked like £35 million plus £10 million in add-ons. You know, we got £40 million for Balogun who, you know, had only just got in the America squad, didn't have a lot of um, on his CV. You should be getting £40 million. I mean, Chelsea paid £25 million for um, Robert Sanchez from Brighton, who's an absolute bang-average goalkeeper. So if he's worth £25 million, a 25-year-old English goalkeeper from Arsenal should be at least £40 million. However, the way we do business, I would be surprised if we got £40 million for him because it's just Arsenal. I personally think we'll get our money back. Um, I think this will be around £30 million quid for him. Um, just, I, I think Newcastle will, will offer us probably even less and I think we'll end up around 30 maybe 35 if we're lucky because clubs know that we need to sell him. We can't keep him for another year. He's going to make noise this summer about leaving. I think minimum minimum 30, I think maximum 40 is what we will get. I think maybe if we're lucky, we get 30 plus 5 in add-ons. Yeah, we have. 
We have, and I've said this many times. You know, in any situation where you're selling something, your car, your house, anything, the one thing you don't do is make it obvious that you want to sell it and you're kind of desperate to sell it. You've got to play it down and make it seem valuable. I think we get our money back. We'll go and buy a cheaper second-choice goalkeeper and we'll have some, you know, a little bit of money there. There's one thing about Arsenal this summer. We have got so many players that we need to sell this summer. And if we do our job properly, if Edu does his job properly, that will enable Arsenal to go and spend, and I, I believe have our biggest ever transfer window. We spent £230 million last summer. Well, it was actually £203 million. We still owe £27 million to Brentford to complete David Rea. So that's going to come out of next summer's money already. So effectively, we've already spent £27 million. I think Arsenal spend two hundred and fifty million this summer. The only way we will do that is if we sell probably five or six players. So I think Ramsdale will go. I think uh, Cedric and El Nenny will get released, so you get those two off the wage bill. Nuno Tavares comes back from the loan. You sell him. You sell Lukonga after the loan. You sell Kieran Tierney after the loan. You then get rid of Eddie and Ketia. And then I think you're probably open to offers for Fabio Vieira, two years at the club, has done nothing really. I think Nelson, if somebody offers decent money for him, I think he'll go. I think ESR, I've tried, I've tried to say, you know, I'm disappointed, but I think if somebody offered us decent money for ESR, the club would sell him. I think ESR or Vieira, I think you're right, Blooming. I think one of those two, they would they will let one of those two go this summer. Marquinhos as well. There's a few players there. You get 30 plus million for Ramsdale. Cedric and El Nenny are released. You get 5 million for Tavares. He's done nothing at Forest. You ain't getting no money for him. Laconga, I'd be expecting 10, 12 million. He's done all right at Luton. Um, Smith Rowe, I would expect 30 million. England international, 22 years of age. 35 million, I reckon. 30, at least. Tierney, I'd be looking at least 15 to 20. You know, Eddie and Ketia, I'm looking 25 million. He's an England international. He's a striker. He's 24. You sell him to Palace, I'm expecting at least 25 million. So there's no reason, even with, and, and I don't think any of those numbers that I've said there are unrealistic. You know, we might even be able to get more. I, I think we should be raising 100 million in player sales this summer. Um, so we'll see. I mean, like you said, Jay, uh, yeah, I would rather sell Ramsdale to Newcastle than Chelsea. Chelsea definitely need a goalkeeper. Um, and, and, you know, we should be able to get decent money. And yeah, with Eddie, listen, forget everything I've said about Eddie in the past. When you go to sell Eddie to Palace, to Wolves, to whoever, you dress that up as scored a hat-trick for Arsenal, right? He's played for England. He's only 24. Listen, as much as I don't rate Eddie, right? If Eddie goes to Crystal Palace and he plays, he's their number one striker, if he is, by the way, because is he better than Mateta? He's a different player. If Eddie plays 38 games for Palace, I think he gets double figures. I think he gets double figures in a team like that. I think he nicks them 10 goals. Put him on penalties, few tappings. He probably nicks 10 goals for a Palace. It's just that Arsenal is not good enough. Yeah, forget everything I've said about Eddie people. And I've said a lot. But I think he could go to a mid-table Premier League team and nick 8 goals, 10 goals. Solanke's on about 16 goals at Bournemouth, and I think Solanke's better than Eddie, but I think Eddie could score goals for Palace, I really do, they've got a man like Jordan Ayew, he's absolutely horrific, so Palace, Wolves, Brentford, Eddie will do just fine at a club like that, Gen I genuinely mean that as well, I think he'd get double figures, Big C, we've been linked with an honour at Everton, but I rate Lekonga over him from a technical point, Lekonga needs game time, um, an honour's not really for the technical side of the game, is he? When you get an honour in the middle of the park, six foot five, he's there to hunt you down and, and get the ball back. He's not great on the ball. In terms of Lekonga, Lekonga for me is is not the answer at Arsenal. Maybe when we was eighth, not now. I don't want Lekonga in a title race. He, he's doing all right at Luton. No disrespect, you might argue that that's Lekonga's level. Uh, or maybe he's a little bit better. Maybe he's mid-table to bottom half of the Prem. 
But Lukonga is not Arsenal level, in my opinion. I think he should go to a similar level to Eddie. You know, those guys are that level, in my opinion. So, uh, and Lukonga struggled at Palace, actually. So maybe he's not even mid-table level. Maybe Luton is his level. Um, anyway, that's the Ramsdale situation. And uh, I'm going to change that poll, actually. And we'll, we'll put another one up in a minute. I just wanted to see what you think. 64% of you say you would rather play Real Madrid than Manchester City, which is interesting. And I think a lot of you are right. Number one, if you keep playing Man City, played them three times this year if you include the Community Shield and we haven't dropped any points, haven't lost to them. The more you play them, the more likely one of those games they might get the better of us, you know, because what I was a little bit afraid of on Sunday with the way that we was playing, because we were so defensive, my concern was if City go 1-0 up, we're in big trouble. That was my concern. If City go 1-0 up, we are in trouble because how do we flip such a defensive performance into having to score to equalise and then maybe try and win it? So, that's, that's the other thing when you play that defensive. It's relying on you keeping a clean sheet. Chris said, sell ESR and Vieira. Let Jorginho and El Nenny go then by Coop Miners and Fafana. Midfield sorted. I think Jorginho will get a one-year deal. Uh, whether I would give him it or not, I'm not sure. I'm a little bit harsh. I would like to see, in an ideal world, despite the leadership, despite the quality on the ball, I would like to see Arsenal sign two centre mids and I would get rid of El Elneny and Jorginho. And because of the things I've heard is that Partey wants to stay for the last year of his contract, I would love to see Arsenal with Declan Rice, two new centre midfielders and Thomas Partey. I think that as a four is title winning level. I think that's an outstanding four. So if you got me for Fauna from Monaco and you maybe get me someone else and then... But it all depends what happens. Does Part A go? Does he stay? I think jo I think Jorginho will get a one-year deal. Um, but with Part A, it's always the fitness worry, isn't it? If Part A finishes this season well and we get that 10 games out of him that I've kept talking about and, he, you know, he has a big influence on us winning a title, then I, I think I would say to him, OK... We'll keep you as a squad player for next season. The problem with Partey, we want him to be a starting player because he's the next best midfielder. He's, as, he's, he's the best midfielder along with Declan Rice. If you downgrade him to a squad player and don't play him every week, you might get a better Partey, but I don't know. At the end of the day, it's in his hands because it's his contract. If he turns around to Arsenal and says, listen, I'm not leaving, mate. I'm settled in London. I've had a kid. I'm married. I don't want to leave. Got a year left. I want to sign a big contract with someone next season. Arsenal can't do anything. Unless they want to go to war with him and they chuck him in the under-23s to train and all that. But I don't think Arsenal will do that. And H, I mean, it's a good point. Some of you saying in the chat, listen, he's our best midfielder. Prime Partey. I think, is the best midfielder at Arsenal. The question is, can he produce that now after this injury? Is he the same player? I don't know. He looked very slow the other day chasing after um, Kevin De Bruyne. I just want to see Partey and Declan Rice play together. I think Rice now is a lot more mobile than him. I think he's just fantastic on the ball. He's very good at winning the ball back. Cole said, um, new FFP rules need to be factored in for transfers. And you're right, bro. And that's why I'm saying Arsenal have to sell well. If we do not sell properly, it will cause us problems when it comes to buying. And that's another reason that Arsenal may be thinking, you know, they're not going for an Osserman because Osserman has a release clause. You've got to pay nearly all of it at once. So... Part A when 100 is a baller. We've seen it, but availability is the best ability, as you say. Yeah, the guy's not available often enough. So, prime part A is the best midfielder in the Premier League. Wow. Rodri, De Bruyne, I'd, I'd say those two maybe, but he's up there. He's definitely up there. That's for sure. Right, a little bit more. And he involves Newcastle again, and I'm sure you've seen it on the thumbnail. Alexander Isak. Um, and actually... You could relate this back to Aaron Ramsdale because 
if this is the striker that Arteta wants, do you go to Newcastle and say, listen, rather than £100 million, we'll give you £60 million plus Ramsdale. We'll give you £65 million plus Ramsdale. Maybe even £70 million plus Ramsdale. Who knows? Story today in the Daily Mail. Newcastle are braced for Arsenal and Tottenham to launch £100 million bids for Alexander Isak as North London rivals look to capitalise on the Magpies' financial fair play concerns. Now, I'm going to ask you what you guys think and I'm going to ask you... First of all, is Isak the answer? I'm going to be honest. Now, I'm going to be honest, as I always am. I think he really suits us. I think he really suits us. I like the style of play. He plays in a way, he's just got, it's effortless. He's got flair about him. However, however, the injury record is a concern. And when you're spending £100 million on a player, you do not want to be worried about whether this guy's going to be able to play or not. Declan Rice, one of the best things about Declan Rice this season for Arsenal is the guy has been available pretty much all season. Isak has not been able to do that at Newcastle. And Newcastle have only just got into Europe. So would he be able to come to Arsenal, play Champions League? And is that body going to stay fit enough? This season, he's played 21 games out of 29. He's missed seven games. Eight games, sorry. He's missed eight games this season through injury. Last season, he missed 16 games in the league through injury. So in, two, in, in a season and a half, just over a season and a half, He's missed 24 league games. 24 league games. He's missed two-thirds of a season in 18 months. That That's the biggest problem. That is the big... I, I don't know if I would pay £100 million and have that doubt in my mind. Now, don't get me wrong. If you could chuck them Ramsdale and take money off, and if you got him for 60 plus Ramsdale, I would consider it. I would consider it, but... I'm not sure I would pay that much money for him. I think for £100 million, you've got to be pretty certain about what you're getting. And I'm not certain. I don't know if this guy's going to spend more time in the physio room or on the pitch. I like him. I honestly do. I wasn't sure about him at Sociedad. The goal record was unconvincing. but And I actually think he really, really would suit our style of play. I honestly do. I think outside the big clubs, he's one of the best strikers in the league. He gets in the Man United team ahead of Rasmus Hoyland. He gets in the Tottenham team. He gets in the Chelsea team. He gets in the Arsenal team. I, I think he probably, if he's fit, scores more goals than Darwin Nunes. Darwin Nunes got 11 league goals, 10, 11 league goals. Um, but he's, is he going to break down? You wouldn't buy an expensive car if you thought he was going to break down on the way home. So, personally for me, I wouldn't pay £100 million for Isak. I think he's a fantastic player, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. It's too much money. Uh, the, risk, the risk is too high. I suppose the reward is high, because if you pay £100 million, he comes to Arsenal, he stays fit, he scores more goals because we're better than Newcastle, we create more chances, gets 25 goals, we win the league. The risk and reward levels itself out. I think for a hundred million, listen. If I don't, if Tottenham have got a hundred million, fair play to them to spend on one player. Um, but I think there's better. I think there's safer options. I think there's safer options because of the injury. Um, I don't know if Jokeres does it in the Premier League. But you get Jokerez for 70, 80 million and he doesn't get injured. I don't know if he's the real deal. But what we've seen, he looks exciting. Ivan Tony, some of you are not as convinced about him as me. I think Ivan Tony is an absolute no brainer. But some of you say, you know, not quick enough and 28 years of age. But I feel like if we sign Ivan Tony, I know what we're signing. His hold up plays as good as anyone in the Premier League. His finishing is excellent. His penalties are ice cold. His injury record is unbelievable. 
I mean, yeah, you've got to keep him away from a betting app and a bookmaker's in the street, but I think I know what I'm getting of Ivan Tony. I don't know what I'm getting if I sign Isak. He could spend half the season in the physio room. And with Jokerez, you've still got that risk of, can he do it in the Premier League? But we'll see. We'll see. It's an interesting one. I think 100 million is unrealistic for Isak. I actually don't think anybody would pay 100 million for him if Newcastle were willing to sell him. Newcastle are struggling. It may be a situation that teams can can go and profit from because Isak was asked after the game at the weekend about potentially moving on and um, he said, you know, you never know what happens in the future. Clearly, you know, Newcastle have had a, a lacklustre season. They made the Champions League last year. They got the richest owners in the world. They find themselves down in eighth. At the moment, they're not even in a conference league spot. They're definitely not getting in the Champions League. They'll be lucky to even get Europa League. At best, they end up in the Conference League. Now, for people like Isak, Bruno Guimaraes, those guys don't want that. Bruno's starting for Brazil. Isak knows that big clubs are looking at him. so, And they have got financial problems. I, I think you could see Newcastle lose a big player this summer, but £100 million for Isak is just not realistic. No one's paying that for him. Um, with that injury record. So now Eddie Howe, I think Eddie Howe was a very good manager when they walked through the door. He got them in the top four. He had a good style of football, works well with the young players. Um, to take Newcastle to the next level, I, I don't think Eddie Howe's going to do that. And that's, I'm not being disrespectful to any Newcastle fans here. I think he only takes you so far. So we'll have to see. Bruno Guimaraes being linked with um, Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid. So maybe they would rather sell him and keep Isak. Goal scorers are harder to find nowadays. So we'll have to see. We will have to see. Uh, what does Daishi think of Isak? I mean, listen, I, I think he's a good player. I think he's a very good player. Scores goals. Uh, problem is, he's always on the physio room. Now, you know, when I was a player, the physio never saw me, mate. In fact, if he even spoke to me, I jabbed him in his nose. Because, um, you know, I'm hardcore. You know, we eat bricks, we eat wood, we eat concrete. This guy, mate, he's made of glass. I wouldn't go anywhere near him. Go for Jokerez, go for Ivan Tony. Um, I wouldn't have him anywhere near me, club. Um, in fact, I'd rather have Calvert-Lewin. Um, but he's out at the moment. He's, he's chipped a toenail. He'll be out for six months. Uh, there we go, mate. There we go. A bit of Daishi. A bit of Daishi. Uh, there's no one like Dominic Calvert-Lewin, mate. No one like big Dominic Calvert-Lewin. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Isak. Let me know. The poll's there. Uh, 100 million. Not a chance, mate. Not a chance um, that I would pay that much for him. I do rate him, but he needs a bigger season before I start wanting Arsenal to do that. Um, anyway, let's look ahead. If you're peckish, you won't be after the next probably five minutes. It is waffle settings from the manager himself. Is he leading us all the way to the promised land, people? Will we see the armpits of Martin Odegaard by the end of May? No diddy, by the way. It's just a, a joke. Lift the trophy, the armpits are up. No diddy, no diddy. Um, will we see the armpits of Martin Odegaard by the end of May? Champions League, Premier League, will he be lifting a trophy? Or will we be the nearly men again? And the only thing we'll win will be, I don't know, the Emirates Cup in pre-season, which nobody wants to just win that, do they? Um, Luton at home, let's be honest. If I look at it just as a fixture on paper, this should be four, five, four, five nil, to be honest. People telling me in the chat, Luton have got seven players out. I mean, Luton with seven players out at home. Luton away is a tough game. Make no mistake, we saw that. We scored a 94th minute winner, Declan Rice. Luton away on that in that small stadium. Away fans are walking through people's back gardens. Their fans about three foot away from you. Lively atmosphere. That is a tough game. Luton at home, you should be smoking them, to be honest. This should be four or five nil. But it's the Premier League. They're fighting for their lives. Anything can happen. Kiros, no, we don't want this to be Southampton part two. These games are nerve-wracking. Before them, 
you're relaxed. You're thinking, yo, Luton, people have been messaging me saying, yo, Brighton at the weekend. I said, bro, we got a game on Wednesday, you know. Don't dismiss anyone in the Premier League. We've seen it with Southampton last year and games like that. we got to beat them. But what I'm saying is goal difference could be important. I, you know, I, yeah, if you offer me a scrappy 1-0 now, would I take it? I mean, it's a win and you tick it off. But in reality, I, I want to see Arsenal score three, four, five goals. Get the confidence up. Get us flowing. Keep that goal difference high. Liverpool play Sheffield United tomorrow. You could argue that's similar to this, but I don't think it is because I think Sheffield United are the worst team in the league. And I think Liverpool are going to annihilate Sheffield United at Anfield. I think they could beat Sheffield United 6 or 7 nil. Salah's done an interview today saying he wants to win the Golden Boot. I wouldn't be surprised if he scores a hat-trick tomorrow. So, if Liverpool go and score 5, 6, 7, we don't want to be winning 1 nil. We need to be winning 3, 4, 5. So, interesting game. Let's see what Arteta has got to say. We'll have a look ahead after this. What lineup should we play? One thing we have to take into account. And I know I said this at the start. Man City had 72% possession against Arsenal. Trust me, there is some tired legs in this group. They would not have had a more difficult game than that all season. Trust me. That running is relentless. It's relentless. They, Arsenal will need to make changes for this game on Wednesday. And then, obviously, we go to Brighton on Saturday. Rotation is going to be vital. After Brighton, we play Bayern Munich next Tuesday. So, I want to see two or three changes on Wednesday night. We'll talk about that after. Let's see what the boss himself, Mickey Rolls, the boss, c c c c c man music. Here we go. Let's see what he had to say ahead of Luton. Uh, the prime bottle's still on there. He said, on how Bakayo Saka is fitness-wise, a lot of people are going, oh, he didn't play well because he's injured. What did he say after the game? Wasn't injured. He was fatigued. Um, he said, yep, yeah, he's fine. Uh, obviously, we haven't trained. We've recovered and have a short li li what is that? short live session today to prepare for the game. We'll see whether he's in the best condition to start or not. Listen, I've said it before and I've said it again. If Saka can walk, he will play. It's been proven. This manager refuses to drop him. Um... This is a good game, actually. It's, it's a tough one, you know. This is a good game on one hand to play Saka because you're thinking we'll win, we'll score goals, you get his confidence up. It's also a good game to rest him because you're not playing great opposition. You should be able to win without him and maybe you keep him a little bit more fresh for Brighton and then Bayern Munich. But I, I just, I, I think there's, if Saka is all right... He's going to start him. And Tsunami said, if Saka can breathe, he will play. On the other hand, maybe you start him, you try and get the game won and you take him off after 60 minutes. And, you know, maybe that's the way he'll go. On um, whether there is an opportunity to give him time to recover, that's a good question. He said, we're just thinking about looting and preparing for the game in the best possible way and earn the right to beat the team. He's going to play. Um, on whether Martinelli is fit enough to play 90 minutes, he said he is because he was available to play against a really tough opponent three days ago. Again, we'll train today and see the state of every player and make the right decision. Martinelli, for me, should be starting this game. On having his whole squad available, now the games are coming thick and fast. He said, yep, yeah, we've discussed that. We're pushing each other, being available to contribute in any way to help us perform consistently. We need to, we need to so we're going to need everybody. Definitely will. I think Timber's the only injured player. And he's obviously in full training as well. So um, hopefully he's not too far away as well. Um, on how he keeps all the players motivated, regardless of playing time, he said, this, that's certainly something really important. Um, he said, they really need to feel it. And the best way to feel it is to play minutes. When they didn't have the capacity to show what they can, when they don't have the capacity to show what they can do, they have to show it in training. We have to be close to them. We have to convince them to keep doing it and earn the right to play. I, I would love to know why nobody has asked him about Smith Rowe in weeks. For, for, for ages, he said Smith Rowe's got to be fit. The guy's been on the bench for months. It's got to the point now he doesn't even come off the bench. Like He doesn't even get five minutes. It's like he's not even considered for selection. The fact he's saying there that, um, you know, you've got to train well to get in the team. Uh, my only thought process is that Smith-Rowe doesn't train well. 
I, and and I, I don't know that. That's the only way I can figure it out. Maybe the manager's just given up on him. Over the last couple of months, it's looked as if he's changed his mind on Nketiah. He doesn't bring him on anymore. You would think he's going to get rid of him. It almost looks like he's given up on ESR. So I don't know. I don't know what the problem is, but wouldn't surprise me if he offloaded him in the summer. Mohamed said, kind of disagree. Martinelli is good when you need your pace. We're going to have all the ball in that game and uh, he ain't that great. We'd rather play ESR. Thing is, the manager doesn't look like he favours ESR. So I would rather play Martinelli because... He's our main left winger, and I think we need to play him back into form. And you're going to need him against Brighton when we're trying to hit them on the break, and you're going to need him against Bayern Munich. So I, I would, I get what you're saying. We're going to dominate the ball, so will Martinelli struggle against the low block? But his pace will worry the Luton defence. Big up Damon, who said, hey, Big C, locked in from Antigua. What would be your striker for Arsenal for the way we play? What we would expect from the striker? Do we need height or deadly in front of goal? I would go for I would go for Ivan Tony. I would. I do like Jokeres, but I just I don't know enough about him. I don't know whether he can do it in this league. Osserman, I'm not convinced. I'm not, honestly, for 110 million with a huge wage, huge signing on fee. Guys twerking for Chelsea on Twitter. I don't like all that. I just wouldn't go for him. Um, I do like Jokeres though. I'm not going to lie, but I just, I haven't seen enough of how he plays to know. Um, they play Benfica twice this week, so I'll have a little look. I'll have a look. I just think Tony would come to Arsenal. I think he'd hold the ball up. He'd win his headers. Great at penalties. Great finisher in the penalty area. He's got that ego about him, that nastiness, that chip on his shoulder. I just and and you would be sixty seventy million and he's proven in the prem, but I I get it. Some people aren't convinced by him, but um, it would probably be Tony or Jokeres at the moment. Osserman, I'm not. I don't know. I, I, maybe I'm maybe I'm doing Osserman a disservice, but I'm not convinced by that guy for that price. Uh, I'm playing a different style to get a result at City. You have to sometimes because you want to adapt. Sometimes because you have to have that resilience and leave your ego and ide ideology aside and the way you have to win the game. The team was mentally strong. It was really clever the way they did it. So he's happy with the de defensive uh, display. On getting players not to be satisfied with a point, um, at City he said you prepare the game to win it. When you feel that, uh, you have to take... Take what it takes to go there and win. You want to do it. If you don't, you're not satisfied. At the same time, you have to understand how you're growing as a team and be smart enough in the moment to accept something. Santiago Jimenez is the guy you've watched him play. I've only watched him a few times, so again, I can't say whether he's the guy. Some of you think Tony's overrated, and that's fine. I get it. I do get it. Really, he's had one top season. Um, but even last week for England... You know, and I don't, it's a small sample size. I watch Ollie Watkins, who everyone's hyping this season, 16 goals, 10 assists. I watch Watkins, he was absolute bang average for England. I watched Ivan Tony. I thought he played really well. His hold-up play, his link-up play, his penalty, he got shots off. Watkins stunk out the place. Um, but it's opinions, it's fair enough, it is fair. Um, let's put another poll up. Why not? Why not? Let's get one more poll up. I can only put four players in this debate. 84% of you say you wouldn't pay 100 million for Isak. I can only put four players in this debate, right? So if it's not one of the ones that's in there, then just uh, feel free to write them in as well. But I'm, I'm going for the ones that we're being heavily linked with. Um, which striker would you sign this summer? Who's the answer, in your opinion? Because a lot of you say, no, I don't want Tony. So I'm intrigued to see who your who your, who your alternative is. I'm not going to say Ollie Watkins. The guy's just signed a four-year deal. You're going to pay 100 million. We're not paying 100 million for him. I'm not going to say Vlajevic. I don't think he leaves. So I'm going to say Ivan Tony. There's no doubt he's available this summer. I'm going to say Victor Osserman. He's got a release clause, 110 million. I'm going to say... 
Jokerez, who has a release clause. Do I put Sesco? I'll put Sesco because we've been linked with him. I don't, I don't think he's the answer. But I'll put him because there's a release clause. So those four are the easiest to get. And then obviously, if you think it's Isak, if you think it's Santiago Jimenez, feel free to write them. So who would be your striker? If Isak's going to cost 100 million, then I don't think Arsenal would pay that for him. Solanke, nah, not for me, Sam. I mean, he's having a good season, but not for me. Not for me. I just don't think um, he's got to do more for before I'm looking at it. Uh, Solanke should go to West Ham. Laser said Tony deserves a chance at a big club. I, I, listen, I would love Arsenal to sign Tony. I, I honestly think he'd do really well. Sam, I hear you, bro. Don't worry. I know you were joking. Um... Sounds like you're describing Lacazette if I was blind on Tony. You know the difference, bro. You know the difference. Scores more goals. That's, that changes everything. If Lacazette was scoring 20 goals, we'd have been happy with him. But he couldn't hit the back of the net. Tony, for me, is better than Lacazette in the Prem. But we'll see. I, I don't think they'll go for Tony personally anyway. I think they're going to go for probably Jokerez or Sesco. Data said Jokerez bagged goals in a dogged championship at a young age. He's excelling in a low block league, working in a possession based system. I think Jokerez is worth the gamble. Otherwise, Tony, yeah, I mean, I said the same too. What about Curtis Shaw? I mean, listen, 150 grand a week, good signing on fee. We can make it happen. We can make it happen. Uh, the, you've seen the intro. I can do that in the Prem. Probably can't run as good anymore, though. Um, Jokerez, Sesco. See, Sesco for me is the one that worries me. I don't want him. And again, I haven't watched enough of him, but I don't want him. I think he's a project. I think you're waiting two years for him to develop. I want somebody that scores 20 goals next season. Um, anyway, let's get through the waffle. Um, on his memories of the win at Luton in December, he said how tough it was to win, how difficult they made it for every team. Big compliments to Rob and the coaching staff. What they've done as a club is an amazing journey. I think they, I think they deserve more credit than any other team in the league, how they've done it. What they transmit as a team and what they generate is going to be a really tough match. I have to admit, Luton have done very well this year. I read something that Luton have the smallest wage budget in the Premier League um, you know, they picked up free transfers. I'm going to be honest. I think Ross Barkley has been one of the best players in the Premier League this season out of, you know, the bottom half of the table teams. I think he's had a really, really good season. And I think somebody in the Premier League will sign Ross Barkley next season if Luton go down. He could easily play for a you know, a good team. I mean, Wolves are tenth. I think he plays for them. Brighton, I think he could get in their team or squad. I mean, West Ham, I got Calvin Phillips. He's absolutely shocking at the moment. That he's swearing at fans as he gets on the coach, and they're seventh. I'm not even. I'm not even lying, right? And they won't want this. He's better than McTominay, by far. By the way, by far, he's better than McTominay at Man United. Way better than him. And they're sixth in the league. I genuinely think he he gets a he's a free agent as well. Yeah, honestly, even Villa, Villa as a squad player, he he can end up at a big club next season on a free as a squad player. Honestly, he he's better than El Nenny at Arsenal. I will tell you that as well. So yeah, uh, Ross Barkley's had a great season. Luton on that budget, man, they've made it hard work for anyone to get points at um at their ground. So fair play to them. I think they're in trouble, though. I do think they might get relegated. Um, on when he first recognised the defensive chemistry of Saliba and Gabriel, when I decided with the club to send Willow to Marseille, I'm just joking. Ah, you're cracking jokes. April Fool's Day was yesterday, bro. Um, I like how he said with the club. As it, no, don't blame me for sending him. Man said the Claude Cup put me off. Guna Greg, you've done me so dirty there. Yo, listen. There was a bobble on the pitch. There was something not right. Um, the pitch was on the outskirts of Tottenham, man. It was a ghetto pitch. But you're forgetting, by the way, I scored the winner in the goal. But yeah, 15 minutes later, I was one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. I tripped over the ball. It happens. It happens, man. Um, 
well, it's not meant to happen, but hey, it is what it is. Guna, Greg, you've absolutely done me. I'm tempted to give you a three-minute timeout, but the banter, it's deserved, to be honest. You trip over the ball in a cup final, you're an absolute disgrace. So, yeah, um, I should go in timeout myself, probably. Look at this guy, Curtis Slips. He made an account called Curtis Slips with a picture of me tripping over the ball. You are an absolute disgrace and a cheat, and I hope you get relegated. I can't believe the community is out in me in the comments. It's deserved. You trip over the ball in the cup final. You're a shambles, mate. You're an absolute shambles. Um, but I did score the winner. I'll take the winner. But, yeah. I remember when Robbie and Lee reacted to that. They uh, they quickly went over the fact I scored and then concentrated on the fact that I slipped over. Yeah, it's Nketiah vibes. It is Eddie. It's Yeah, it's Eddie Shaw. It's Eddie Shaw. For that moment in time... I'll take the I'll take the disrespect. I'll take the disrespect. Um Yeah, I deserve it. But just in case you forgot. Don't forget people, don't go anywhere. <laughs> I had to do that, man. I got, we can't concentrate on the slip. The far corner gets hit sometimes. Run that thing. I had to run it. Right, let me go anyway. Let me go. Let me go. I'm getting distracted. Um, the waffle. Um, what did, What was the question? Oh, Saliba and Gabriel. Uh, Arteta's cracking jokes. You know, we're, we've had a good week. He said, you just feel it when you see the partnership sometimes. Um, and there is chemistry between the two players. Um, they complement each other. Cheeky, really, they had to be done. Uh, compliment each other. They're so happy to work with each other, to work off each other. It just flows. It happens. I think they will enjoy playing together. There is a thing on Sky at the moment. And um, I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's uh, an interview with Gabriel and Saliba. And what I thought was really interesting, and I love this, by the way, they asked them who was the best defender in the league. Now, sometimes you think, oh, they're going to be nice and they're going to go, oh, Van Dijk, Diaz. Gabriel said, I'm the best defender in the league. And I thought, I love that. I, I love the fact that that happened. And then Saliba was like, yeah, I think he is as well. And I thought, you know what, Gabby? I, I, think, that's, I think that's quality that he said him. Believe in yourself. I don't, don't be all nice. All Van Dyke. No, I bond that. We're in. We're going to war with them, man. Don't praise any of them. Man said, yo, me, bro. Man didn't even say Saliba. Man said, me. I'm better than you. Even though we're a centre-back pairing, I'm better than you. I said, you know what, bro? Ultimate respect. And as I said the other day, I actually think Gabriel might have had a better season than Saliba. But... It's very similar. It's very similar. But it's just great that we've got them both. Sam has said, get Isak on loan. We have loaned them before. There's no way they're loaning out their best player. If he goes, they need cash for FFP. They ain't loaning him out. I wish. Willie said, have you not seen Tony against United? He was so bad. Wills, but you know the thing, bro. And I did watch that game. But if you're, the, if you're Thomas Frank... You're in the dressing room after the game. You've drawn 1-1 with Man United. You've conceded in the 96th minute. And... Oh, Willow cheated for... Oh, so they were cheating for points. Fair enough. Maybe you don't think he's the best. But listen, if you're Thomas Frank, you're sitting in the dressing room, you're going, 96th minute, Mason Mount scores. Game over, you've lost. 99th minute, Tony sends Lissandro Martinez to the shops. Pulls it back and that guy scores and they equalise in the 99th minute. He also bullied their centre-backs all game and he hit the post and he volleyed one just over. So his finishing wasn't at his best. But I guarantee you go in that Man United changing room, you ask the two centre-backs, what was Ivan Tony like to play against today? Varane came off injured. Maguire came on and got done. Lissandro got done. He was a nightmare for them to play against. Finishing wasn't quite on point. So I don't think... If that's him playing bad, in your opinion, I would even more want him at Arsenal. But, as I say, I think it's all irrelevant. Big up, though, Wills, for the super chat. Strikers don't score every game, bro. You look at Haaland against Arsenal the other day. Didn't score. What did he do? 
did nothing, got bullied. What did Roy Keane say? If he doesn't score, he looks like a League Two player. Tony didn't score the other day. What was he? Constant threat, great hold-up play, great assist. So, simp so I, I actually saw that as a good performance. But it is what it is. Uh, let's move on. Let's get through the waffle. How we are approaching the Luton game different to City. We're going to be needing even more. It's after two and a half days. Luton are in a really good moment. I wouldn't say that good a moment, mate. They're in a... They're in the relegation zone. They're third from bottom, so I don't know what he's on about there. Um, when you see the games they have played, even when they haven't won, they've been tough. We have had extraordinary results against the other two teams that are at the moment leading the table. We are not tops. So that means we've missed certain points somewhere elsewhere. That's what we have to put emphasis on tomorrow. Yep, yeah, you're right. How he's feeling going into the crucial period? He said, I'm excited. We have discussions. When we played Liverpool a few months ago, it's a must win or not lose because you know the title is over. That was two months ago. It's always like that when you look back in October. You feel the necessity to win. It's not going to change from now till the end. Obviously, the end is coming. Nine games is still a lot. I just embrace it and go game by game and uh, make sure we are prepared for tomorrow. On the narrative around Saliba's absence last season affecting the title charge, what is the narrative this season? Saliba is fit, so what's going to happen? There is... There has to be no narrative. There has to be a narrative when he doesn't play and a narrative when he does play. I mean, that's some. He's, he's, that's the politician talk. He said something without really not saying anything. Um, on whether Saliba being fit will mean we win the title. He said, let's take that one. Okay, let's move on. Um, on the importance of keeping players fit, he said, for sure, Saliba is a massive player. See the impact he has on the team. We need everybody at their best. On being in contention for the Champions League and the Premier League, this is where we want to be. We want to take this opportunity and make it happen. I'll skip it. It's a long answer. Whether he is enjoying the moment, he said, I'm pretty excited. I'm full of energy. It's the most beautiful part of the season. On whether he's more excited than he was as a player, he said, it's different. I haven't been in this position when I was a player. you got to remember, bro, he played for Everton. You know what I mean? In fact, he played for Arsenal, but we were flimsy them times, man. You know what I mean? We weren't winning titles. And if we have to win every single game, he said, I don't know, but it's going to be really close to that when you see the level and the consistency. Historically, what is needed, it's not going to be far from that. I was talking about this with Turkish yesterday. How many wins is it going to take out of the last nine? Do you have to win nine out of nine to win the league? I personally think that every team will drop points. I think you might get away with eight wins. I don't think it will be much less than that. And when I say eight wins, that other game, I, I don't think that can be a defeat either. I think you're probably talking about eight wins and a draw. Um, if you start winning six, seven, even if you win seven, but the other two were defeats, you know, that might not be enough. I think you've probably got to win seven or eight. You, The, most, the, the least I would say would be seven wins, two draws, as you've said there, SGA. Tony needs a hunt, a chemistry style. I do agree. David said, man like Curtis plays the intro in his own shows without a request. Well, the, the community were coming for me, so I had to let them know. I had to let them know. But hey, it is what it is. Great banter as always. Is it easy to explain to the players? He said, it's easy to see. It's a fact and not something I'm inventing. Um, on how he allows himself to think long term when there are games every three days. You have to have a picture of what is coming, manage the load of when we're going to be able to train, how long we're going to have to prepare for games. Let's skip it. If we're, are we in phase four or of his five-phase plan? He said, let me go back to the computer. He's, he's trying to run some banter today, isn't he? We're not far. I think we're getting close to that. But once you get to certain points, you go back to phase one again. Oh, no, I don't want to go back to phase one. And if he can explain each of the phases, he says, no, maybe one day we'll have a coffee and I'll tell you how it works. Ah, he's in a good mood, isn't he? And if we're on track overall, he said, we certainly are because you feel a lot of things around the club. It's not only the first team. What the women did at the weekend made us proud. Big up. They won the Conti Cup. So important. We are encouraging and embracing. It's the same with the academy, the supporters, the unity. There's a lot of good things happening. On Timber's recovery, he said he's doing well. He's training. He's not far. Thing is, the last step, he hasn't played minutes. He needs a game with the under-21s, or does he need two games? On his chances of playing for the first team this season, he said he has a good chance. I don't know the percentage, but I think he has a good chance. 
could too many changes disrupt the team when we rotate? He said, that's a good question. We're always wondering that and just changing personnel. Does he prefer one or two changes? He said, we've done it before. Historically, we have done both. Does he prefer more? At times they've worked. Let's skip it. I'm done. The waffle's done. The syrups ran out. We're full. We've got indigestion. Phase one was locked down. I don't want to go back to phase one, people. You know what I mean? With Socrates at centre-back um, and Mustafi and them. Let's never go there again. Um, I've, I've never heard him try and crack so many jokes. I don't know how well they landed in the press conference. Maybe the... Um, Maybe the uh, written version of it, the joke doesn't land as well, does it? So I let him off. Uh, AR said the likes of Tony and Osserman played football at the wrong time. Those types of traditional clinical strikers are effective nowadays and easy to defend against. Jokerez is perfect. He's technical. I suppose the argument, and I like, I like your point there because they are more traditional number nines. The argument would be, how did Tony score 20 at Brentford last year? How did Osserman score 26 and win the league if they're out of fashion? I think I think they can be used if you've got the right system and the right style. Um, Tony doesn't have electric pace, so you've got to use him in a different way. Osserman, I don't think, is technically that great. Maybe he does have a bit more pace, so... I suppose it's about getting the striker that matches our style um, best of all. But big up for the super chat, bro. Out of waffles, clean interview, wake up and add toast. Bro, that that press conference was, was tiring me out. Right, let's focus. Game tomorrow, Luton. Let's smash them and just keep it moving. Don't complicate this game in any way, shape or form. Handle business, smash them 4 or 5 nil, and go to the Pebble Beach of Brighton. But... Don't disrespect them either, because we've been here. Southampton last year, relegation battle. I'm sure on that preview, I was probably saying how many. Next minute, we're losing and we're scrambling and the title's disappearing out of our hands. Let's pick the team. David Ray is in goal, of course. He will play every game between now and the end of the season. Brick Wall at centre-back. Gabriel and Saliba. I think this season, you're looking at the best uh, defensive central defensive pairing in the league. Big up Quinny said, got my ticket for buying at home. I know they did say that for Red members, they were sending out emails today to say whether you'd got a ticket or not. So if you are a Red member and you did go in the ballot, check your emails, see if you got a ticket. Um, I've had a few messages from people saying they did get tickets and some saying they didn't. Um, so yeah, ho hopefully you did get a ticket. And uh, just to give you some advice, by the way, um, I've seen tickets online selling for about £400. So if you've got a couple of tickets and you're not going, you've got some, you know, you can flip them and make a bit of money. Um, but anyway, anyway, um, let's move on. How, how do we line up? How do we line up for this game? Um, do we make any changes in defence? I mean, it's Benny Blanco, in my opinion. Mm, I think I would do it. I would. I was. Go I would have done it against Man City. I, I think the time is now, people. This. It might sound harsh. I tell you why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because Tommy Asu's a better defender than Kivio at left back. I can't judge Kivior at centre-back. He actually hasn't played there enough. Arsenal's aim going into this last nine games should be get the strongest possible team on that pitch together. Because you can't go Tottenham away, Man United away, Brighton away, Wolves away, Villa at home, Chelsea at home. You can't go into them games with a couple of players in the team that might cost you the game. And I, I know that sounds harsh on Kivio because he's done okay. I mean, some of you are saying, play Zinni. And you know what? Because we're going to dominate the ball, that's actually a very good point. However, my thinking behind it is I want Tommy Asu fit for Bayern Munich. He hasn't had enough minutes. I think this is a great game to get him minutes. So I would go with that. That is Arsenal's best available back four until Timber is fit, in my opinion. Tommy Asu's better than Kivior. 
I think Zinchenko's better on the ball than Tommy Asu, and obviously Zinchenko can drift into the midfield. He may play Zinchenko. I'm going to be honest. The more I think about it, we're going to dominate the ball against Luton. He might go with Zinchenko. I've kind of got to the point with Zinny where I'm thinking I'm selling him in the summer, so I'm not sure I'm playing him. Also, my concern is, if anybody's watched Luton a lot this season, they put crosses into the area a lot. They are direct. Do I want Zinchenko at the back post? You know, trying to win headers. Their, their biggest threat will be their aerial threat. I think that back four is rock solid. I think that's such a solid back four. I would want to see that back four against Bayern Munich next week. So I'm playing it into form. Again, this might be controversial. I want to know your comments. I'm doing it. The general returns. And I'm doing it for the same reason. I want to know your thoughts in the comments. I think the time is now. It's the midfield we've wanted to see all season and we haven't seen it. We've waited nearly six months for this guy to come back from injury. He came on for 20, 27, 28 minutes he played against Man City. A couple of times he switched off. Apart from that, I thought, thought he did well. Looked quality on the ball. You get him in this game, 60 minutes, get him off the pitch. Get 60 minutes in the tank. Then you've got Brighton at the weekend. You see how he reacts. If his body doesn't take it well, you get him back out of the team for Brighton. If he handles it well, then I think you build him in. There's no time for sentiment, people. Genuinely. There's no time for sentiment. Pep has no sentiment. Sterling scores 20 goals. Cheers, mate. Sold. Grealish comes in. Grealish takes his eye off the ball. Bench. Don't care cries about Aguero, bins him. No sentiment. Oh, but Jorginho's played well the last two months. That's the last two months. Kivio's done a good job for us. He deserves some loyalty. No, he doesn't. Not if he's not the answer. Is he better than Tommy Asu? No. So for me, get ready for Bayern and Brighton. Do it against Luton. Simple. This is for me. I mean, I'm looking at your comments. I want to know what you think. I'm sure you won't all agree. I mean, Truce said part A still better coming on as a sub. Fair enough. Ramon said yes, Big C getting match fit for the coming game. Saliba says facts. Um, Grealish was getting cooked on the. But you see, Pep. I mean, Grealish was on for like 15 minutes. Pep came on was like yo. I don't know what he was saying, but he was not happy with Grealish. Um, get him shot, party every time. He won't start party this early. I'm not sure he will either. I'm not sure he will. And you're right, Elwood. Kivio's still getting 50, 60 grand in his week on Friday. 50 grand a week in his bank. It's not that harsh. Uh, front three. Front three. This is what I would pick, and then we'll look at what Arteta would pick. I'm going Gabby. I'm going Gabby Martinelli, by the way, when I say Gabby. Um... This next two is tricky because Jesus frustrated me the other day, but he was the most likely. I, what I'm trying to say here is, are we are we looking at it and going, Havertz is our striker for the last nine games of the season? Or are we looking at it saying, we're at our best when Jesus is fully fit playing through the middle. I, I don't really know the answer to that question, if I'm being honest. I mean, some of you are saying play both of them. Play Jesus wide and rest Sacco. Could be a good point. That could be a good point, you know. It might be time to rest Sacco. The fact Jesus has been out for a little while, is he going to be able to play? He didn't play 90 against Man City, did he? But Jesus, this is actually quite a tough one. Now I'm thinking about it. Havertz is still in a good run of form. Before that game, he was in a good run of form. Um, well, I'm not. Pl I'm not starting Trossard. The thing is, right? I, okay, let's break it down realistically. Jesus does look good when he's up front, but he's not a goal threat. Havertz is having his best run of form, so 
Let's play him because I think he can score in this game. Um, do you play Saka or not on the right? Reese ain't going to get a game, is he? Maybe we play Jesus on the right and give and give Saka a rest. I actually think Jesus on the right is better than Nelson. I got, so I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll give Saka a rest. I think you've got two dangerous players there, either side of Havertz. They can make runs into the era. That's what I'll go for. I'll give Saka a rest. Because I think he needs a rest. I'm sick of him limping off the pitch every game. You know, I, I don't want that. Um, I was tempted to play Jesus central and play Saka on the right. But, right, that's what I would pick. That team would annihilate Luton. I agree. But we know he ain't playing that team. Let's, let's get realistic with Arteta. I don't think part A starts. And I don't think... Jesus starts on the right either. I think he'll play Saka, of course. If Saka can walk, he's going to play. And I think he'll play Jorginho. The only thing that's making me think he might change things is he took Kivior off early for Tommy Asu. And he took Jorginho off early for Partey. I just don't think he'll play Partey from the start yet. I think he might play Tommy. He might actually play Zinchenko. Because we're going to dominate the ball so much against Luton. He might think he needs him at left back to dominate the ball. We've seen him do that a lot of times when we've been at home against teams. And I, I don't think he probably has given up um, on Zinchenko yet. The point that I was making there, though, is... Do we go with... Um, is there a route back for Jesus to get back up front in this team? Even though Havertz has played well in recent weeks, am I still fully convinced that Havertz plays the next nine games up front? I'm not totally convinced. I still think there's room for Jesus to get him out of that team. I'm not sure. The problem with Jesus just doesn't score enough. He's not in the penalty area enough. He doesn't start. He doesn't cause enough problems. Do you know what? It wouldn't surprise me if he went Zinchenko because of how much we're going to dominate possession. That team would be Jesus out, and that would be Kivior out. So it would only be two changes from the game against Man City. I don't think he will make wholesale changes. I think it would probably be two or three changes. So it wouldn't surprise me if his team's not far off that. Dre said Jesus is a winger, not good enough at nine. My problem with him, he's just not en not enough of a goal threat, is he? Mindful said that would annoy Tommy Asu. This is what I think Arteta will pick. This isn't what I would pick, by the way. I would play Tommy Asu at left back. I would play part A ahead of Jorginho. Um, I would even be tempted to, if Saka did play, Because he is going to play Saka, let's face it. To go with that. I think that team beats Luton 5-0 minimum. <laughs> I'm being honest. I think that team beats Luton 5-0. Saka, Martinelli, Havertz, Rice, Odegaard, Part A, Tommy Asu, Gabriel, Saliba, Ben White, Rail. For a start, they don't score. And, and you're right, you're spot on there. Ross Barkley, in the game at Luton, caused us all sorts of problems. Jorginho, you saw the other day, the problem with Jorginho, you got, mo you got mobile centre mids. He's struggling. He's struggling. He struggled against Man City. Foden, all them lot, was ratting around him. He couldn't get near him. I think Partey could lock down Ross Barkley. So... That would be our strongest team, in my opinion. I, I understand the point of Saka being rested, though. I wouldn't have a problem. I think Adebayo is actually out injured. He's been out for a while. They've got that Colton Morris guy who isn't as good. So that would be my team. I'd love to see Part A play. I don't think he's probably quite ready to start in Arteta's mind because he's been out for so long. But I think it would be a great opportunity to get him minutes and uh, play him back into form ahead of Brighton and Bayern Munich, but we'll have to see. Uh, people, thank you very much for tuning in today. Really appreciate your support, as always. 
Tomorrow is match day. I, I, you know what? Personally, I always said as a player, I didn't want to train Monday to Friday. I wanted a midweek game. You hear managers and coaches complain about playing every four days. As a player, there was nothing better than playing midweek under the lights. Weekend, midweek, it's the best thing. Even as a content creator, as a football fan, I love midweek games. So I think there's a few games on tonight. Tomorrow night could be an extended watch along because Arsenal kick off at 7.30 and uh, Man City play Aston Villa at 8.15. So what I may do, as long as Man City are not winning like 3-0, um, our game finishes, they will still have nearly all of their second half. So if that game is tight, I may stay on to the end of the Man City game. Uh, my prediction tomorrow, I'm going to go for 4-0. I'm going to go for 4-0 to Arsenal. Um, I don't think it will be like 5-6-7. I think we'll be a little bit more conservative. But I'm going to go for 4-0. Uh, I think if we can score in the first 20 minutes, we'll have way too much for them. But we are going to need to score goals because I actually think Liverpool might beat Sheffield United. Five, six, seven, nil. Because I think Sheffield United are even worse. Um, so I'm going to go four nil. But it wouldn't surprise me if it was just maybe two nil or three nil. Um, some of you going eight nil, six nil, two nil, double stream. Well, it'll be an extended stream, definitely. As long as City are not winning comfortably, we'll extend the stream. Um, big up. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. I'll be live. From 6.30 p.m. UK time. It's a 7.30 p.m. kickoff. So we go live an hour before kickoff. And uh, we'll extend it for the Man City game as well. And uh, I'm doing a fan cam after the game as well. Make sure you tune in for them fan cams. Follow Curtis Shaw TV on TikTok as well for all your goal reaction compilations. Big up, people. Enjoy your Tuesday. This week seems a bit lopsided. It feels like Monday today. Yesterday was bank holiday Monday. It felt like a Sunday. But Arsenal are back tomorrow. 7.30 kickoff, 6.30 for the watch along. Take care, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bless. <laughs>